also what I notice is when it comes to these high profile situations, especially with the parents and, you know, the child that's been killed or, you know, in these cases, when it comes to the revelatory aspect sacrificed, the parents, they don't never really seem too genuine in regards to their grief. You know, in some sort of ways, you see them in the chill type of tone or they try to act like they're, you know, grieving. You don't really see no tears. You know, when I saw the father give the interview, he tried to act like he was crying and whatnot. You didn't see any tears come down his face. And you see the mother right here, she just seemed like it's nothing. Like, whatever, I'm here. I'm just going to get my benefits from this. And you see the colors, the blue and the red with the mom. And you see some sibling, I'm sure that is, in the all black because they explain to you what these things are about when it comes to what they wear. Obviously, they're not going to tell you, so they show you what they wear. Just like in the other segment where you saw them and you saw the mom in the all red, you saw the dad with the blue and the black and the white to let you know what it was really about in regards to the, the color schemes. And also, you know, them on a checkerboard floor, a Masonic checkerboard floor. But I just wanted to show this image here, not only to explain the aspect of the colors, but just, you know, you just see the nature in which the mom is just chill. She's not even like sorrowful or grieving or anything like that. And none of the interviews, you don't see her crying at all. Like for your daughter to be killed in this way, I wouldn't even be able to hold my composure. And she's just like chill about it in every interview. So it's just something to see. It's just something to look more into in regards to looking through it or seeing through it. And also just this whole aspect where it's like, ah, you don't really see any cases like this where someone, you know, a woman or just anybody in a group of friends, they go out, you know, they go out to another country and what have you. And, you know, they spend a little vacation and this person gets set up in a way that she does. It's so odd. It's so weird. And it just lets you know that it's more than meets the eye. It's big business. That's what it's really about. And a lot of people, a lot of silly, you know, incredulous, you know, easily misled people who don't really understand what this world is about because they don't really want to tap into the spiritual realm or they don't really understand the spiritual aspect and how to grasp it. You know, they want to laugh and gainsay and whatnot. You got to understand what this world is about, especially in these last days. If you claim to be so spiritual, then you have to understand how to grasp things spiritually, especially when it comes to what you see. It's not about the tangible. It's about the intangible. And when I say what you see, I'm just talking about what they show you on a level where they communicate other than, you know, speaking. They communicate to you on many different levels, and that's how you pick it up. You know what I mean? You got to understand, like, you have these interviews on these high-profile segments these high profile networks with these high profile people. You want TMZ and whatnot. I know this is a big case, but it's one of those things that just screams Masonic. It just screams Masonry. That's all it screams. Every time you have a situation like this and the parents, they all over these different networks that's high profile, let you know what the parents are about. Trayvon Martin and his parents, his dad, high level Mason now. Someone who rose up in the degrees after his son was sacrificed. Sacrificed for Tammuz. Trayvon Martin was a sacrifice. That whole thing that played out was a script. And it all played out based off of a Masonic offering. An appeasement of their god, Lucifer. According to Albert Pike. That's what it's about. This whole world. You got to understand the true inner workings of it. None of this shit just happens just that, just by happenstance. These people, they get set up, even by the parents, because the parents, they reap the benefits. And the parents, they already pretty much gave themselves over when they pledged to the Masonic Order, quote-unquote, allegedly. But they already communicate what it is to you. Especially when you look at you know, that segment with the checkerboard floor, that already gave it away. That's just, come on. All you got to do is contextualize everything, put everything into context when it comes to this as a whole. You see the parents, and you see the color schemes. 
They communicate to you with different colors. They communicate to you on different levels. It just is what it is. That's what it's about. That's the world that we live in. But, you know, let's get into something else. So as you can see here, the checkerboard floor and the Masonic Lodge with the red and blue color schemes. The red represents blood as well as fire. And the blue represents air as well as water. It says regular Masonic Lodges work the first three Masonic degrees rather than the appendant Masonic orders such as York Rite and Scottish Rite. They are also called craft lodges. All lodges belong to a grand lodge and are members of their system, AF and AM or F and AM. The system that the particular grand lodge belongs to would dictate the ritual used in the standard lodge operations, lodge business, Masonic order, sacrifice. However, this is another distinction between the lodges. This is based on the ritual used in the degrees themselves. Blue lodges are based on the rituals as created by the York Rite body of Freemasonry. The other styles called red lodges. This is based on the rituals of the Scottish Rite. The actual ritual used and the philosophical and esoteric foundation is explained in more depth in Albert Pike's tone, Morals and Dogma. And that's something that I'm sure a lot of brothers are familiar with, where Albert Pike pretty much lets you know you know, who they appease and what they worship and who they worship when it comes to the Masons. And it's all under the same Luciferian branch. It is what it is. This is the world that we live in and we live in under the power of Masonry, Luciferianism, iniquity, the left hand. That's just what it's about. But this is just for further context in regards to the color schemes of red and blue going back to the red and blue lodges the red and blue principles the black and white masonic principles of duality boaz and yakin the twin pillars that's why you saw the black and white imagery when it comes to the checkerboard floor also when it comes to what you saw the parents wearing or particularly the father the mother she had on the all red the red represents sacrifice that's why she had on all red that's why. But let's just get more into it. And when I'm talking about the mom in the all red, I'm just talking about her in the context of where she was at when she wore the all red. Obviously, they want to give off that left hand significance in regards to the conveyance of the color schemes. So she wears all red in the segment where she does the interview on the checkerboard floor along with her husband who wears the blue with the black and the white. She has the all red because the red once again represents sacrifice. That's what the red represents. So in this case it's about the communicative aspect. They letting you know what it is. You just gotta pick up on it. They letting you know what it is. And as I said, they don't seem too distraught, you know, they seem very composed and chill about their daughter dying in the fashion that she did. You know, the video gets leaked. All these people come forth and do all these videos. It's obvious what this, you know, what what it's about. Like, why would you do all these videos? Like, why are you getting on live explaining yourself? Wouldn't you want to, you know, hide yourself? If you're a suspect in a murder, like, it doesn't make real sense. It's so weird. But I just wanted to go into this excerpt from Albert Pike's tome in regards to you know, further contextualizing the Masonic aspect. So it says, that which we must say to the crowd is we worship a God, but it is the God one adores without superstition. To you, sovereign, grand inspector general, we say this, and you may repeat it to the brethren of the 32nd, 31st, and 30th degrees. The Masonic religion should be, by all of us initiates of the high degrees, maintain in the purity of the Luciferian doctrine. If Lucifer were not God, would I deny the God of the Christians, whose deeds prove cruelty, perfidy, and hatred of man, barbarism, and repulsion for science, would I deny and his priests culminate him, letting you know this is the person that we regard in high esteem. This is the person that we put on a pedestal when it comes to 
their veneration of their god Lucifer. The Masons worship Lucifer. When it comes to this world, the higher levels, the upper levels, these celebrities, these entertainers, they're high level Masons, they're Luciferians. That's what it is. We see it a lot. We already know this. We already know this. <laughs> we know this already. So we just got to always grasp these things on a spiritual level when it comes to what this is really about. You know, in order for us to understand how the devil works, we got to know, you know, the intangible aspect of this world. It's about deception. It's about trying to butter you up. It's about pretty much, you know, giving it to you on a binary, a binary scale, but still giving you the clues in regards to how they disseminate shit, in regards to how they teach, in regards to, you know, what they allow you to, you know, understand. You got to understand how the devil works. The power of the devil is all based in, you know, pretty much subjugating your understanding of how to have a clear mind because you all caught up in the black and white. You're not necessarily caught up in the context. In, in order for you to clear your mind, you got to be able to sit back and quiet yourself and humble yourself and understand how to look at things from a different perspective or just see the different shades of gray, see all these different sides of things. But it's more so just about the spiritual aspect. I know I'm going on a tangent, but it's more about the spiritual aspect. In order for you to really understand how this shit work, I'm just going to cut to the chase. You got to understand the Bible. When you understand the Bible, when you understand the Most High, you understand everything that's in front of you. That's just what it is. So let's just get more into it. Man, I mean, it wasn't no physical argument. They attacked her, man. I mean, it seemed like from my daughter was asleep, man, you know, um, for all of them to be in that room. And then, you know, they come in there like, I don't know, she woke up or whatever the way it seemed like they attacked her, man. And she naked, man, you know, for a father. To see that video, man, because my daughter's not a fighter, man. She's not a fighter, not at all. For them to do what they did, man, it just seemed like it was a plot. Because they couldn't get. Where's the tears, though? I don't see no tears falling down this guy's face. And I understand that, you know, you probably did his little grieving time, but that's your daughter. Like, that's, <laughs> that's your seed that literally came from your loins. And there's no tears. And the other thing that's interesting about this is the fact that they used the picture of what you, you know, what, you, what you're used to seeing in regards to the same picture that they keep posting. Where her with the breasts out, but you don't see her breasts because her hair is covering her breasts. Just kind of interesting that they use those pictures instead of like old family pictures of her and her innocence and whatnot. And one of the brothers alluded to this as well, and that was just something that I agree with. Like, yo, wow, like they only keep using this picture. The picture of her with the long hair down to her breasts and it's covering her breasts. And she's in this like pose that's, you know, she's a beautiful lady, but it's more of a like an adult type of um, pose. To a degree, because obviously there's some, you know, covering up. But I just feel like they should have used a, a different picture. Like, that was a picture that they even showed for the funeral. That's one of those prominent pictures that you saw when you first came across this story. And it's just something that I feel like is more than meets the eye when it comes to that. Like, are these really her parents? Now, mind you, they do look like her, but it's, 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 it's a lot of questions when it comes to this story. But peep the colors. Black and red, obviously, on a high-profile segment, high-profile network such as TMZ. We already know what TMZ is aligned with in regards to the Israeli Mossad. This guy right here, I believe, is a Mason. He is a Mason. It's no way that you on a TMZ and you're speaking about this and you just happen to be a regular person. No, this person is a Mason, I believe. And, you know, this had to happen based off of Someone getting appeased, someone reaping the benefits, the parents green lighting this and trying to act all incredulous and distraught. Like if this was real, like if, if, if this person was really sincere, I'm not saying like this is fake, this is a real situation. But if this person was really sincere when it comes to their grieving, they would be crying. This is a father who lost their child in the way that they lost their child. I would be crying. It would be constant tears coming down my face every time I talk about my daughter. 
But this person seems to be holding it together and try to act like, you know, he's he's almost about to cry or whatever. It's like, come on, it's bullshit, man. And then you had certain people at the funeral that were celebrities, which also make me question this shit. Then you have the um the aspect where the white horse, the white horse representing the mother goddess, Epona, then you, you know, equate that with her loss, the album by Drake and 21 Savage. That came out a week after this took place. It's a lot of things that, you know, coincide with these stories when it comes to the Luciferian element, believe it or not. Get over here, man. They couldn't have did over here. They couldn't have did that over here, you know, where her friends, all her friends are. You know, it wouldn't it wouldn't went down like that, man. They don't realize, you know, what they done done, man. They took a hole, they took a hole, they, they, they just robbed, they just put a hole in my heart, man. That was my only child. I'm just heartbroken, man. You know, I can't even be a granddaddy. Can't even walk it down the aisle, man. Can't even hear a voice. Can't even hear say daddy. Mom, you know, can't even say daddy. Can't even hear say grandma. Man, you know, y'all, I just don't know. Y'all just don't know what this that done to me. Just don't know, man. You just, you just don't know. Just don't know. Just don't know. No tears. You know, I thought she'd be burying me. Not me burying her. What do you hope happens in this situation when it comes to getting justice for your girl? They get charged for it, ma'am. And they go back over there and do the time. Because that's what they did to crime, man. And they left for that, ma'am. They left for in that house, ma'am. They left for there for the maids to find her. Don't you know how much the pain my daughter suffered? for the injuries, you know, that she took, you know, she was smaller, smaller frame, man, you know, you know, but him to sit there and try to get her no help or nothing, I just want justice to help, I just, I'm, I'm just angry, hurt, sad, all in one, man, all in one, and I've been dealing with this from day one, when I got the phone call, saying that she had passed, man, you know, it's just something that's just a little fishy about this dude and the parents as well. You see them on all these high-profile networks and let you know what this is really about. It was a sacrifice. That's all it was. As you can see right here, the white horse and the white represents sacrifice. That's what the white represents. When Kobe Bryant passed away in the aftermath, you saw LeBron James in a white hoodie and you saw Dwayne Wade in a white hoodie. It represents sacrifice. It represents that spiritual element when it comes to the transmigration. But you see the casket. It's like yellow and pinkish. We already know what the color yellow represents. It represents that enlightenment aspect. And you see the yellow theme when it comes to this story a lot. Especially with the photo where you see her and her friends or whoever those people are. One of the girls throwing up the horns and, you know, in the background, it's the yellow. In the foreground, you see a lot of them wearing black. So it's just a lot of elements to this story when it comes to the Luciferian angle. And it's not to say that they did that on happenstance, but the people that pushed this story, they know what, what photos to use so it can match up with the Luciferian angle. You feel what I'm saying? They use certain photos just so it can match up with the Luciferian angle. Just like TMZ, they show certain photos just so it can match up with some sort of Luciferian vibration. And it's not to say that the people in the photos are doing it on purpose, but they understand that, you know, certain hand signs mean something. Because sometimes somebody may throw up some shit and not necessarily do it on purpose when it comes to, you know, trying to um, give off some sort of vibration. They just do it spontaneously, just, you know, whether they're playing basketball or doing something. And TMZ will still use that photo because they understand that that's still giving off a vibration that's met with, the Luciferian agenda that's being pushed. And it's the same thing when it comes to certain photos used in this story here. But I haven't been able to like look at too much when it comes to evidence regarding the Masonic element. But all you can do is just look at certain images when it comes to where, you know, the parents are at, like the checkerboard floor element, the color schemes, so on and so forth, as well as the holes in the story that's not necessarily adding up. You know what I mean? That's all you need to find. You get what I'm saying? You have the um the pictures of 
the phone numbers from every person that was there when it comes to the quote unquote Cabo Six. I think it's like two people that was there that didn't share their phone numbers, and that was Nasir and one of the other brothers. And Nasir was someone who, you know, you hear him talk, and based off of his testimony, it's just not necessarily adding up. And why would you even talk? Like, if you were suspect in a murder, why would you talk? He said he wasn't there, but in other videos, you hear him, or what, what seems to be him, you know, behind the camera, when it comes to that um, situation that occurred with the young woman where, you know, she's getting beat up and the person that the person is saying, like, fight back or some shit like that. Something like that. The person is saying it sounds like it's um, the brother. Uh, what's his name? Nasir. I think that's his, yeah, Nasir. The brother um, Nasir Wiggins. So it's just one of those things where when you look at this as a whole, as far as how they disseminate it on a mass scale nationally, you already understand that it's an esoteric significance behind it. And they prove it. It confirms itself when it comes to what the parents wear, where they have their interviews at, you know, the, the networks that they're on, so on and so forth. So that's just my understanding of it. You guys can take it or leave it, but it's obvious that this is what it is, especially given the fact that we in these last days. So things are going to come to the fore when it comes to the spiritual left hand element. So God bless you all and Shalom. Peace.